Hey, good morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. I wasn't planning on making an improvised field video today, but it happened because I literally just improvised some really cool stuff. I think it's gonna work. Uh, it's been fails all morning. So my buddy, uh, Mike Kilo Charlie ate Oscar Whiskey Lima on Instagram was like, hey, you should turn that into a six meter uh, jungle antenna and uh, basically just cut longer elements using the same formula. So I did that yesterday. Unfortunately, there's almost no FM repeater activity out here. The closest is on Mount Lemon, about 42 miles from my location. And the other two are ridiculous at about 120 plus miles, uh, once in Tucson. So I cut everything. Had a good SWR at the house. This morning I decided to remeasure and I realized, oh, I've got way too much wire here. I cut four inches off each of the four elements and uh, decided to try to prep here. We'll talk about it, but I got the higher ground, hiked out about two miles. Looks like I could have pretty much line of sight going 42 miles out to Mount Lemon. And the damn thing was uh, resonating too high in frequency, like closer to 60 megahertz and my heart sank because I'm bringing my man pack today. So, wasn't able to capture it, but what I did do was actually take my, um, my two meter version, and I, you can't see it from here, uh, I'll, I'll pull this down later, but I actually had to cannibalize one of my two meter elements, cut the end off the six meter one, uh, use that technique of pinching and pulling with my finger to expose about an inch of wire, tied a uh, fisherman's knot, tied those two together, used the electrical tape, put that bad boy up and adjusted it. And I got under two to one SWR. Uh, still cannot hit the 42 mile station, but keyed up really quickly. I tried at the station that's 120 miles and the repeater acknowledged. I stopped it, grabbed my recording gear and that's where we are. So this is true field improvisation. Well, I'm not terribly hopeful, but if we're able just to get into the repeater, that is success in my book. I'm going to run 50 watts and we're going to see if we can get anybody, but I'll be happy to get another acknowledgement beep. So we'll talk about this man pack in the after action report we're going to actually do out here. So let's turn on our radio. And I'm on 53.720 megahertz. This is KT7RUN testing out six meters for the first time with a jungle antenna out here in uh, close to the Tonto National Forest on the state trust land side. Uh, just trying to see if anybody will come back to me. We're definitely in the repeater. This is freaking awesome. All right. Well, you know what? I'm going to let this chill for a little bit. Um, anyways, I figured out uh, what I wanted to out of this video, and it was like, can we really improvise it? Uh, the big takeaway, we're going to do a mini after action report and have this be a short video, was that I'm going to start carrying with me an SWR analyzer or an antenna analyzer out in the field. I have my cheap Nano VNA. I'm going to look for one that has a more solid uh, construction case. They're fairly tiny. You can charge them on five volts, and it was a lifesaver to help me realize what was going on. I certainly don't want to damage my radio by keying up and having like a six to one or 10 to one match. So let me actually show you what was successful. I actually, for the six meter version, since there's a lot of wire and our trees are still kind of low, uh, we're up about uh, probably 16 or 17 feet. Uh, still using my uh, sleep system or my uh, shelter system. And uh, the ability for me to go and adjust the line with the taut line hitch was a lifesaver here because I was able to go ahead and make adjustments. You can actually see that the radials are actually still very small. I was not able to readjust them. So this is the end of the looped over wire. And then I actually have three of them here. So I actually did go with the traditional version. And yeah, I'm low to the ground. The radial is probably about two and a half feet. Uh, I did change out the coax. It's actually kind of cool. This actually has a female coax on one end and male on the other. This came from my Ed Fong roll of J-Pole, and I thought it would be a perfect run down to my 8900 uh, man pack or even the HT. So everything else is pretty much the same. Let me go ahead and uh, we'll bring down the section. and You can kind of see where I MacGyvered this uh, improvised antenna. So you can actually see, hopefully, my handiwork here. So not the greatest, but I literally cut this with my, with my multi-tool. Um, there's a little bit dangling from the end. I didn't want it cut anymore to avoid another nightmare. And then just kind of looped it over like we did in the past with the S-Clip carabiner. But basically just a little knot there. And then I, where I wrapped over the um, center insulator, 
tied them together, I just put that same electrical tape. So guys, I'm gonna call this a success. I learned so much. So gonna bring the SWR analyzer. I realized that maybe there's a problem with that six meter repeater out 40 miles. We're able at least to break the squelch on the repeater down in Tucson, almost 120 miles. So thinking on our feet was fantastic. And then also having the three guy lines with the taut line hitch and the ability to adjust, absolutely amazing. And I learned from this experience once you tune something out at the house and it's good, don't blindly go making changes. All right, folks, let's jump into a quick after action report. I wasn't planning on making this since I had done that little bit in the field, but I failed to mention a few things. Also, I wasn't even planning to make that video, uh, but the second I pulled out the multi-tool and actually had to think on my feet and improvise a longer wire out there, I thought it was worth uh, including it in part of this series. So that's what we have. Last week, we went ahead and we built the jungle antenna and we built that for two meters. And I had a friend on Instagram, Mike Kilo Charlie 8 Oscar Whiskey Lima. He's like, just bring some more wire, just make larger elements. So I actually did that and planned to just chill this weekend and hang out. This was the uh, size of the two meter elements we did last week. And this roughly was the size for six meters. So just a little bit different length based on the formula, based on the frequency we wanted to work. Well. Before I even did that, I wanted to understand if six meters FM was actually viable in my area because I had never worked six meters FM. So pulled out the repeater book app and I figured let's just try to hit a repeater. Well, there were only three and the closest, like I said, was the one at Mount Union at about 42 miles and the other two, I didn't even think I could hit uh, over 120 miles. Uh, the, the other one being in the Tucson area, which we actually did end up opening up the squelch on. So at that point, I did a path analysis from my home location to that 42 mile station. And there were a couple of obstructions in the way. And I figured, you know what, given the fact that I had never worked six meters before, given the fact that it was quite a distance away, let's go ahead and try to improve our location. So this is one of those radio tips. If you're not sure if you could be heard, improving your location, like higher ground can help. So there's a spot about two miles from my house. I decided to trek out there. Uh, went up about maybe 500 feet in elevation. Uh, that spot, I actually did do another path analysis and it looked like I had a clear shot all the way to Mount Union. So the night before or the day before the experiment, I went ahead and built uh, four elements for six meters to be cut on that uh, frequency for that repeater. And I don't know if you notice here, but where the tape is on my element here, this is very short. Uh, in fact, I had when I had originally cut it, I had probably enough to go out to this position looped on itself. So put everything away, or actually I tested the SWR, it looked good. Uh, I think I came at like in at like 1.2 to one, so I was happy with that. And then the next morning, the day of the exercise, around like four o'clock in the morning, you know what, I'm like, I'm gonna cut a little bit off of the extra that's looped over and I cut off four inches on each of the elements. And that left this piece probably out to about here or so, looped on itself. So make the trek out there, deploy the antenna, that guy system with the three uh, stakes and the paracord went up super quick, uh, even throwing it over the tree. And I got out my old Nano VNA. This is over two and a half years old. And it was resonant too high, closer to the 60 megahertz range. And I looked and I was probably about a nine to one or 10 to one uh, match or SWR on the, um, for the frequency I wanted to work. So I freaked out. And the first thing I did was take all of the elements. And well, even before I did that, uh, I use a taut line hitch on all of my guy lines, which allow me to adjust the length. So I went and put some slack by just taking the, I should have brought a taut line hitch here. Do I have any rope? Actually, my kit was right behind me. So like I said, I always carry uh, pre-guide lines where I have all my knots all ready to go. So stake goes in the ground, S-clip carabiner, overhand knot, and then this guy is the taut line hitch. You probably won't be able to see it, but I can adjust the length and it doesn't move. So typically when I have this deployed, I try to make it as long as I can. So when I need to tension it, I can go ahead and pull it back and make it shorter. 
So the first thing I did was release some slack on all three sides, lowered the uh, top section with the rope I had tied over the tree, and then I went ahead and took our element. And the purpose by my design is to be able to remove the uh, first the electrical tape here at the end. And like I mentioned before, you get glasses. You can remove this multiple times. Um, not a real big issue if it gets to the point where it's really terrible, you can go ahead and you know just replace it when you get back to the house. So I had this little bit extra. So for those longer lengths, all I did was say, let's max it out. So I undid this section here. And this is why I like these S-clip carabiners. So I pulled this in and essentially I got to the point where it was maybe an inch or so on the end here. And I wrapped the electrical tape around. This was the max length I could go, all right? Uh, put tension again on everything, measured it. The uh, resonant frequency dropped down to about 58 megahertz, which is better, but again, my heart sank. That four inches I cut off at the shack was significant. So here's what I came up with. I decided that I was gonna leave the radiating elements alone, completely maxed out at this distance. And then what I was gonna do is essentially take uh, one of my two meter sections that I had in my, my kit, because I still have my two meter elements, and I cut off with my multi-tool the piece that had the, the pigtail here, or the uh, ring terminal. So let's talk about actually how I spliced it together. So let's say that this is now the, actually, hold on a second, I've got this out here. So I took off the S-clip carabiner on the radi radiating element, and then let's pretend this is the extra pigtail from the two meter section. I wanted a way to secure these because you have to remember the radiating element actually will be the load bearing piece. So there's a knot called the fisherman's knot. It's really quite simple. You take your one of your wires and you do just a very simple overhand knot. And if I can't show the, do this justice here, look it up online. So we're just gonna do a very simple overhand knot. Actually, I want a little bit more on the working end here. One second. Let's give me a little bit more to work with. So we've got our overhand knot here. And we're gonna do the same thing with our extra pigtail that we cut off, but first we're going to loop it through this guy, okay? And then all we're going to do is do another overhand knot. Yeah, and you definitely are not gonna be able to see what I'm doing here. But the point is, look up Fisherman's Knot. So I've got one knot over here, I've got one knot over here. And the cool thing about the fisherman's knot is that you can pull these pieces together and it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, so the next thing I have to do is be able to strip off these two pieces of installation so we can achieve a mechanical connection. Now, I cut my fingernails uh, about a week ago and they're not very long, but I told you the reason why I like this um, silicone wire is that I can literally take my thumb and forefinger pinch and pull, and then do the same thing to the other side, right? We'll just go ahead and loop this or braid this on top of itself, do it with the other side. And this is quite literally, guys, the technique I came up with. And then for better or for worse, we're gonna take these two sections and we're also going to just wrap them up on themselves. Put it up against the wire, and then we're gonna retake the electrical tape we cannibalized, and I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it over just like that. So at this point, now, we look something like this. Again, not the sexiest thing, but this was improvised in the field, and then we'll go and take our S-clip carabiner again, and we'll loop it through the first hole, and then back through the second hole here. Okay, and I didn't have any more electrical tape with me. I cinched it probably better here, but it, I don't think it really mattered. So I was able then to almost pretty much max this one out or just kind of eyeball it. Um, and then I pulled out the Nano VNA and then I got down to uh, was a accept, acceptable SWR. So that is really it in terms of how I improvised that. 
so take what you want from this, but the point is I thought of my foot or feet, used the gear that I had, and really the major takeaway, there were two out of this exercise that were the fails, was once you measure something at the house and everything looks good, don't mess with it, right? If I hadn't messed with those extra four inches, we would have been operating, but it was a valuable lesson that I learned. Two, I was on the fence of whether I wanted to bring with me a nano VNA into the field. And it's gonna be a staple now that's always included in my kit. Um, they were still relatively small. And uh, if nothing else, it gives me the ability to have an extra SMA to BNC connector, which is kind of cool. So this is roughly the same type of connector I would use on my HT if needed. So a little bit of redundancy when I add uh, this guy right here. Now, the only change I did make was, this is the only one I have. I gave away, I think, two of them when I hit 500 subs a couple of years ago. And this one's a little bit janky. It's got like everything exposed. And my buddy Mike said, hey, whoop. Use this guy here. This one has a little bit uh, more sturdy uh, case construction. So I picked this up for, I think, 55 bucks. I'll put a link down below. It has all the same capabilities as my older one, but now this is going to be my field SWR analyzer so that I can do these measurements. In the absence of that, I can, again, use the tape measure, that formula, and figure it out and get close enough. Point is, cutting off four inches really did screw me on this one. All right, guys, uh, next video up is going to be improvised HF. If you have any ideas on how I should go about uh, establishing a antenna with the Cobra head and a barbed wire fence, we've got barbed wire fence for miles out here, hundreds of miles. So we're gonna probably go down that route, probably do some digital, see how we propagate, get some signal reports, all that good stuff. Big thanks to the guys on Buy Me A Coffee. You're amazing. They're part of the reason why I actually ended up doing this second half to give you more details. I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. Well, we're out here. We might as well try a simplex on six meters. I actually had to look this one up before I left the house, and it's on figures five zero decimal one two five. CQ, 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 this is Kilo Tango 7 Romeo Uniform November at a Delta Mike 33. I'm testing out a jungle antenna out here on state trust land near the Tonto National Forest, calling CQ, CQ, CQ on 6. No beans.